Hello, welcome to this later morning hangout. Uh, I'm sorry, taste challenge. Taste challenge was kind of a hangout, but it's it's more uh, de more dedicated to challenging tastes. And well, <laughs> I do have enough tomfoolery in these things. I have to admit, I have to accuse myself. But um, so we have two Canadian blended in whiskeys. Let me put the check off because this is for Monday. You say Monday? It's only Thursday. I know, but. Already did Friday. I did Thursday this morning. All right, it's Thursday. Saturday morning, I will plan to do Dawn Busters. Sunday morning, I plan to do Dawn Busters. Of course, any of these things can change. You never know what could happen. happen. And then Monday, um, well, <laughs> maybe I could do it on Monday because I was looking for, I found chocolate porter. Got it. Um, milk porter. Got it. Peanut butter porter, got it. Coffee porter, could not get it, couldn't find it. I was so irritated. And that's the theme for Malty Monday, Monday night, eight o'clock Eastern time. Coffee porters. And I couldn't find one. And I mean, what I'm gonna do? Drive all over New Orleans looking for New Orleans looking for one. New Orleans. People say I hear people on the internet say New Orleans, New Orleans. Those people, I hear them on hangouts. Those people down there. They're always saying Nolans. Me and my friends, we went to Nolans. And I'm thinking to myself, I never heard anybody in the city say that. Actually, literally my whole life. My whole life. I never heard anybody say Nolans. <laughs> and I'm like, I got so many relatives live in that city. I think that's some kind of CBS television thing where somebody from like Indiana tried to uh, sort of mimic their accent. And, and there got to be this like cultural thing where People think it's pronounced in apostrophe Allins, A W L I N S, but literally no one in the city pronounces it that way. Of course, no one says New Orleans either. You know, they say New Orleans. Usually, they just say New Orleans. I live in New Orleans. If they're in the Ninth Ward, they say I live in New Orleans. New Orleans, New, but they'll say the whole word New, New Orleans. Now, if they're uptown, right, like on Chestnut Street, they'll say. My family and I have lived in New Orleans, have lived in New Orleans since the 1870s, <laughs> New Orleans. But no, I never heard anybody say Nolans, two syllables, Nolans. No, I just never heard anybody say that. All right, anyway, except on CBS, like, uh, see, uh, what it got, like, um, whatever. I never watched those shows, like Navy Investigators, New Orleans, or something like that. Crime scene, New Orleans, whatever. All right, just the other whiskey. But getting that out the way, uh, here is Seagram's Canadian Hunter. Introduced in 1984, sold to Sazerac Company in 1989, just five short years later, and replaced by Canadian Hunter. If you look at any bottles after 89, or maybe later in 89, they just say Canadian Hunter without the Seagram's. And it wasn't too long after they came up with new bottles, like the squared off benchmark type bottles. You know what I'm talking about? Benchmark, Ancient Age, and about a million other brands, you know, figuratively. <laughs> and they have the bullet and the same general theme, the hunter with the rifle and the two husky dogs and the mountains and the woods in the background. So when I first tried it, I thought it tasted like the current Canadian hunter. I was like, oh, that's the same thing. I was fooled. I was wrong. Till I did a blind taste test. They're not the same. Believe me. Believe me, you believe you me. There is also a Hunter Rye. It's a gray and white label. Got the same squared off bottle. Um, benchmark bottle, ancient age bottle. And uh, it's 90 proof and it's a rye whiskey. Uh, we did a, do a review of it. We really liked it. I went back to Broadway Liquor last week. Before I went to the Tulane game, I parked and I was going to the Tulane football game, and uh, which they won. Then I forgot to bring my cha change of outfit, so I did like five video reviews in a row at David's house. And uh, I never um, – people will say, why you didn't – because I usually change my cap or whatever, and they'll say, why you didn't change? They're going to say that. I'm going to say, I forgot to bring a change of clothes. But uh, I was in Broadway Liquor, and they had Canadian – 
Hunter Rye. They had Hunter Rye, but only the 200 milliliter little sample bottles. 100 milliliters, sorry. And I said to the man, I said, well, um, hey, y'all, I want the glass bottle. You know, he said, I don't have that. So I left. I didn't buy anything, but I got to go back. I want to go back because they have this blended American whiskey, which is, um, oh, I can't think of the names, drive me mad. That's why I want to go back like today, but I ain't driving. You know, I'm not going to drive 25 miles, 20, 28 miles, almost 27 miles to go buy that when I can just get it next time I'm passing through. I'm pretty sure nobody's going to buy it. So that's the story of Canadian Hunter. There's the Canadian Hunter and Hunter Rye. Now, are there any other variants? Don't be shocked if there are. You say, oh, I saw Canadian Hunter apple. I saw Canadian Hunter cinnamon. I wouldn't be surprised. You never see it listed. Here's the competitor today, Canadian Crest. This is the old bottle label. This is the, like the worst looking bottle label ever. I mean, there are worse labels. You look at a lot of craft beers, they all got funny animals on them. You ever look at modern craft beer labels? They like um, amateurish cartoon artwork with loud colors and um, funny animals or the devil, something to do with the devil. This, this ale is evil, they'll say. And I'm like, yeah, evil. I can, I can show you some really evil stuff to put on your label, but I bet you wouldn't do it. Um, and they like cereal boxes. They look like kids cereal boxes. I'm sorry, I'm not impressed. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. My friend David complains about it all the time. He's like, look at these. It makes you not want to drink it. I say, I know, I know. You, you're preaching to the choir. This one looks like a medicine bottle. Like some kind of commodity medicine, like issued to the United States Navy for naval use only. You know, but it's whiskey. It's got a Canadian maple leaf, you know, all of that. It's just a special blend, eh? And it's got this write up. I don't know. They improved it a lot. I looked at the new the new label design for 2020. It's white or cream colored. It's got a it's got some orange highlights and um, like um, I don't know some kind of Canadian thing. But it looks really nice. It's like stately. And I say now nah, they improved it so much. It looks so much nicer. Um, the new Canadian Crest label. Okay, let's go. Now, this was introduced in 2004. You can look it up. There's no website for it, but there's there's listings for it on us. Uh, I got Safeway grocery store. It says bottled by the Founders Company, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, that's Sazerac. Now, this one says bottled by uh, White Rock Distillers of Maine. Guess who owns that today? You know, Sazerac. Sazerac bought the whiskey, and then later on, they bought the distillery where they bottle stuff and blend things. I say, ah, I don't think they distill there yet or ever, if they ever will. Um, before you think you can only get Canadian Crest at Albertsons or Bonds or Safeway or Super Value, think again. I was at Broadway Liquors. Like I told you last week, they had Canadian Crest, the modern label. Yeah, the new white cream color label. I've seen it at other stores too. I think this Savannah Discount had it. So, hey, they might say it's registered to Albertson Safeway, super value, but I um, mean, you know, other people are selling it. It's like Caliber Canadian whiskey. It's supposed to be registered to Walmart Apollo, sort of Rouse's. I see all kind of caliber uh, liqueurs, schnapps, triple sec, everything. That's Savannah discount. Now, explain that. Here's what they say about it on their website. I don't mean the company's website. This liquor don't have a website, but on uh, Safeway grocery stores. There's a Safeway in Grand Isle, Louisiana, believe it or not. Canadian whiskey with natural flavors, a distinguished blend of choice ingredients compose this delicate whiskey. Enjoy the distinctive experience of this Canadian blend. Special blend, again, authentic. All they're doing is writing what's on the bottle. Approved by John James, who in the world that is. 
80 proof bottled by the founders company, Louisville, Kentucky. And guess what the price is right now? <laughs> Get this. If you've got a Safeway club card, it's $8.99 a bottle. But if you got a Safeway club card, you can get it for $4.99 through January 1st. $4.99? You know I'd get those cards. Those cards don't cost any money. Get like a loyalty card. They just want to track your purchases so they can send you emails and bother you about some stuff, you know. Proposition 65 warning. Oh, it's some government warning for Illinois. Drinking distilled spirits, beer, coolers, wine, and other alcoholic beverages may increase a cancer risk during pregnancy and can cause birth defects. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the nanny state, you know. It's not just England and Ireland the, and Canada. The United States has a, a nanny state government, too. Like, they tell you things you, you, should, you should know already, you know. Uh, and then they have it on the back here. Warning. Warning, fools. I didn't have enough for a second taste challenge. So I'm just pouring it all in. I'm going all in. No, that's about a serving anyway. It's amber. Spilled a little, not much. I have to wipe it up off this leather top desk. This desk is so heavy. It's steel, I guess. It's got a leather top, you know, these old 1940s desks with all sorts of drawers and other drawers you pull out and it's got like a flat piece that comes out, like a writing table. I bought it at a used furniture store for like $30 in 1989. Incredible. Um, this one is pale straw. I don't need tags. I, don't, I keep saying I don't need tags, but I got the tags on the bottom of the glasses, but I don't need them until I get to like... Um, Crown Royal, you know, it's very pale too. Joe Biden's denture says $4.99 a bottle. They are embracing the shop price mindset. You got that right. <laughs> They're the ones that put that in my mind. <laughs> in my mind. Michael C says all Canadian products deserve warnings. Oh, here's an anti Canadianite. Julia, Julie Gilpin says, Good morning. Good morning to you, Jules. Whoa, I got some good people watching. Maxwell in Russia. The Russian Federation. Good morning, Ron. Good morning to you. So, pale straw, caramel. No age statement on the Canadian crest. The Seagram's is three years. It's aged three years. You can still buy the international market. Now, you might be watching this video saying, I got to fly into New Orleans next week for a conference. And we all have to cover our, our mouth and nose and, and be scary and, and not be close to each other. Although we won't really do it. We'll just act like we're doing it. And then we'll just hang out all close. But, um, well, while you're down here, pass on by International Market. Go in there and you can buy Canadian Hunter, Seagram's Canadian Hunter for $8.99. Now, if you want to buy, buy the modern bottle, it's also $8.99. But why not buy both? It's only going to cost you $17.98. And then you can do a, a blind taste test, right? Find out what do you prefer, the original or the reformulated Sazerac version? Michael said, day of the rake is coming leaps. Right. Okay. Um. It just smells like regular old standard Canadian whiskey, which means what? A lot of corn, base, spicy rye notes. They used to call Canadian whiskey rye. You ever heard that old 49-year-old song? They were drinking whiskey and rye. They meant in the song they were drinking American whiskey and rye whiskey, meaning Canadian whiskey. It's not that much higher rye than American whiskeys in general, but it does tend to be higher. So it just got the nickname rye because people thought it was spicier, you know. But now you can buy straight up rye whiskey from Canada. I mean, all rye, like a Canadian Northern Harvest Rye from Crown Royal, Northern Harvest Rye, and I got a bottle. 
And yeah, I got it cheap. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. I was at Discount Depot and I was about to check out and I had bought all kinds of stuff already. I said, oh, I bought too much today. And I turned back and I looked. There was a whole shelf, pallet, whatever, just dozens and dozens of bottles. Regular size too, 750. I'm looking at it and I'm not, I'm like slapping myself like, what are you looking at? It said $12.99. It's $24. No. Some stores got it $30. $24 if you're lucky. I said $12.99 if I'm not buying it. Oh, uh, you know what? It might have been $15.99, $16. Well, still, just look it up. Look it up on Total Wine. It, it's like $28. Look it up on Walmart.com. It's $30. I got it for less than 20. I couldn't believe it. I was so delighted. Anyway, I got the receipt somewhere, but I mean, you know, we talking about, it was very cheap, half price. Now this smells like the other one, like a lot of corn, but I think I detect, I think I detect a slight little almond note. And John and Neely, if he's listening saying, oh no, not almonds, I'm saying, yep. But that's, uh, I'm not sure about it. Let's go with the taste. Shoot. Sometimes I'll chime and then I'll do it again and it cancels out the first. You say, what does it mean? Uh, nothing. All right. It's just antics. Now, James P. Madonna does all that. I think he he actually believes it like it's going to get rid of Grigri or something, a bad juju or bring in a mojo hand or something. I, I don't pay any mind to all that. I just do it for like antics. Um, well, that's pretty spicy, though. No joke. That's got a strong peppery note. That's higher rye. That might be higher rye than I had first believed. It's making me think of the old Canadian leaf bottle that I had from... Um, Baltimore County, Maryland. You say, well, that ain't Baltimore is not in Canada. No, I mean it was bottled there. And a lot of things coming out of Monumental Distilling. Uh, oh, yeah, they changed the name. It's called Majestic Distilling today. Be known for their rye, high rye. Used to make Pikeville rye there. True story. They might still bottle it. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> not too much rye. It's there in the back taste, but that 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 um, almond taste. Uh, they must be using white rum. That's what John and Ellie said during the summer. That's it, white rum. I said I knew it was something that had to be in there that was making it taste like that. <laughs> Which one tastes better? Well, I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna show it now. That's got to be the Seagrams. Ha ha ha. Ha, ha, ha. I can open my eyes. It's so pale. You know it's the Seagram's. And that's got to be the Canadian Crest. You say, wow, it's that dark after three short years. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's that dark. After three sh short years and a shot of caramel color. Canadian Hunter has rye, too. Yes. And then they make, remember, they make their Canadian rye, the Hunter rye. Hunter rye, which is just straight up rye whiskey. Now, I don't know if it's 100% rye. It probably isn't. But it's, you know, mostly rye. And that's 90 proof. Rye must be one of the cheaper grains. I don't really know. Anheuser-Busch InBev should start using rye as their adjunct in place of corn. <laughs> a rye beer. I've tasted some rye IPAs. Uh, no, I don't think it's too cheap. But what do I know for grain prices? The answer, I don't know anything. Except I know corn is government subsidized, which I do not agree with. The Constitution says the government is established to to serve the general welfare. Notice it's a general welfare. It doesn't say it's established to serve the special interest or specific welfare, you see. General would be like laws that would help everyone in general, not people in, in not people specifically like corn growers. Uh, it's not bad, the hunter rye. Oh no, I like it a lot. It's just that I didn't get to sample it. As soon as I started really loving it, the bottle was gone because I had two small bottles. I want to get a regular 750 of it. 
but don't know where to find it. Oh, I'm violating my own protocol. I said I was going to call Sazerac. They'll tell me. They should be open by now. Yeah, I know they're open. I'm going to call. As soon as I get off this hangout, I'm calling Sazerac. I'm going to say, where can I find Hunter Rye? Watch him tell me. Well, they got it at Broadway Liquor. I'm going to say, yeah, but it's a little bottle. I want a big bottle. <laughs> Which tastes better? Um, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got that. Well, let me say it like this. If you want a whiskey that's cheap, but tastes very similar to Crown Royal, which is probably what they were shooting for, well, it makes sense because it's the same people that made Crown Royal. You got to remember this. Seagram's made Crown Royal from 1939 to the year 2000. And they're the ones that developed Canadian Hunter, which is still a, one of the top 20 selling Canadian whiskeys in America um, in 1984. So could they have been basing it on Crown Royal ideo ideology, so to speak? Yes, and probably they were. I'm very curious to see how this is going to match up with Crown Royal. But it's not, it, it's, well, no, I'm thinking Crown Royal used to be 86 proof. No, thinking of something else. Crown Royal, I think, was always 80 proof. You know, a lot of these products used to be 86. Oh, yeah, Seagram's VO used to be 86. And for whatever reason, they dropped it to 80. Did it with Jack Daniels. Did it with Seagram Seven Crown. Did it with everything. Jim Bean. Somebody should write a good internet article like why did uh, most of the major whiskeys get dropped from 90 or 86.6 .6 to 80 across the board, basically across the board. That'd be a fascinating article to read. But I want to have some firm evidence. You know, when I read that article, I want to hear some firm evidence, not, well, I got a friend in the industry and he says, uh huh. Look, Canadian Crest is just the Sazerac house style, all right? And that is nearly impossible to describe. To someone who's never tried it. You know, John Ailey, John's got the good insight on it because he said vanilla ec almond extract, which it, we know they're not using an almond extract. He's just thinking along those lines. Now, you might taste it and say, ah, oh, y'all are crazy. It's not, uh, we're not saying it has it. We're saying there's, we're trying to make a, a proper explanation of it. But really, the only true answer is you got to go buy some and try it. It's very cheap at Total Wine and more. There's so many Sazerac Canadian brands just at that one store. You can get James Fox. If you don't want James Fox, you can get Canadian Lake. And if you don't want Canadian Lake, you can get um, Canadian Hunter. And if you don't want that, you can get Club Classic. I think it's called Club Classic. That's another Sazerac brand. I know they use some alias name like the, the Legacy Company or something. Legacy Distilling, but it ain't no Legacy. It's a Sazerac. All right. In fact, you could buy all four bottles. It wouldn't cost you $30. And we're talking about handle bottles. I'm not talking about, well, let's see. Two, two of them would be liters and two would be handles. Yeah, it'd be so cheap. I mean, you have, you'd have be like, I, I bought all this whiskey and it was so cheap. Now you could do blind taste tests one against the other. And you see what I'm talking about. They'd be virtually indistinguishable. They would be, they would be, distinguishable. You would be able to tell them one from the other, but the, but the, the, the differences are so monstrously minimal. You, in a practical sense, they're the same. I think they all use separate recipes, but it might be like the mash bill is just like slightly altered. You know what I'm saying? Like this one is 80% corn, but the other one's 81% corn. And that one's, you know, 15% rye and that one's 16% rye. You see what I'm saying? So and the age is probably all three years. So I think, and another way they could tweak it maybe is add a little bit more rum. And then the other one, they're adding a little bit less rum. So
you say, yeah, but nobody's even buying those to do taste challenges or sipping. They're just mixing them. Yeah, and see, that's another reason that would almost be like a fool's gold. You know what I mean? You say, I've discovered something, but you discover something that has no value. But it, if it has value to you, then it's valuable. You understand? Because do these taste challenges accomplish anything in reality? They don't really accomplish anything, but they accomplish something for me on my own. You know, I'm smart. I'm not dumb like people say. I'm smart and I want, res I want respect. You know what I'm saying? So then I can determine that these things have different, slightly different flavors. And that's as long as I'm doing it, it's kind of like entertaining myself and you're watching it. It's kind of like pur purposeful. Michael C says subsidized hops. Yeah. Corn is subsidized by taxpayers to make ethanol, says Craft Beer Tastic. And then we're taxed again to run the stuff in our vehicles. Right. It's, it's a double negative because you're getting ripped off on the front end, the back end. And other people are, are, are becoming wealthy off of your tax burden. When I don't, I don't support that. You say, well, I'm going to get those Republicans, or you might conversely say, I'm going to get those Democrats. Look, I don't care which party you run behind. They're both in on that scam. Like Michael Corleone said, we're both part of the same hypocrisy. Joe Biden's denture says, I'm curious as to what is the best selling whiskey in America. Um, Best selling whiskey in America. You see, that fluctuates a little bit because it's uh, crowded at the top, but it's like Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Fireball, and Crown Royal. I know those are the top four. There's no doubt about that. Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Fireball. I know every time I say the word Fireball, I cringe because I tried it and it was horrible um, because I do not need to drink whiskey with Red Hots in it. You might, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. Nah, God, die. Nah. Of course, right up behind those is uh, Johnny Walker Red Label. The typical stuff, you know, stuff that you see everywhere. Those are the top selling brands, you know. Seagram Seven Crowns up there. VO. Because you see them at every store, so they're big sellers, you know. I'm not saying they're great. They're obviously not great. That's why they're cheap, but they're big sellers. So, but I think Jack Daniels is number one. But in Louisiana, it's Crown Royal. Crown Royal is the best selling whiskey in Louisiana. And there's no argument there. That's it's clearly number one. Julia Gilpin says descriptives, right? Descriptives. I'm trying to think of descriptors or descriptors. Whatever you subsidize, you get more of a universal truth. Joe Biden's denture says that's right. This is a truth that people don't want to address or they don't have the mentality to understand it. It's like in the 1960s, they said, we're going to give money to women who are not married and have babies to help them so we can reduce teenage pregnancy. Well, what happened was unmarried, unwed pregnancy skyrocketed because what happened was you were subsidizing of certain behavior. So when you subsidize, you get more of it. This is, these are not complicated concepts. If I paid people to watch this channel, I'd get more viewers, common sense. They say, I'm gonna go watch it. I don't even care what he says. I'm not even gonna listen. I'm just gonna turn the sound down and play it because I'm gonna get paid. See, so it's, it's, it's a basic mathematical equation, like you're saying, but people can't grasp it or they don't want to grasp it. What is your favorite rye whiskey for $50 or less? Okay, Johnny James, I don't have a lot of experience with rye whiskey, uh, but so far it would have to be um, uh, I was going to say wood for reserve rye, but you see, well, that's less than $50, isn't it? But I got it so cheap. We got it in an outrageously low price, but um. Uh, I think I have to go with Woodford Reserve Rye. So far, you know, I don't have a lot of experience. Sazerac Rye is very nice. And $17.99 a bottle? Come on. They got people around the United States paying 30 bucks a bottle everywhere. 
Every store in New Orleans got it for $17.99. Michael C. says, Fredo. <laughs> um, I'm trying to pick a favorite here as we end. I tell you what, it's tough. Because they both have like positive attributes. So if you want something that tastes remarkably similar to Crown Royal, get the discontinued Seagram's Canadian Hunter. It's only been off the market for 31 years. <laughs> 31 years, but you can still find it. True story. Lurking in the dark corners of America's cities. Um, but really, do I really want to drink something that tastes like Crown Royal? Do I really want to drink some? Do I really want to drink Crown Royal? You know, that's a question you might want to ask yourself. Um, this one is a little more, it, it's, it's unique. It's a little more... Um, It's a little more, well, it's a little more interesting, honestly. It may not be proper. You know, you might taste it and say, that's improper. But then you might say, yeah, but it's interesting. Where the one that's proper is a little more dull. So um, I don't know, it's personal preference. I like both. So if you ask me, which do you like the best? I'll say both. <laughs> um, no great winners, no great losers. It's a tie, but but the but the the most important thing is, can you tell them apart? Without a shadow of a doubt, you can tell them apart. And I haven't gotten it wrong since I started Crown um, Crown Seagram's uh, Canadian Hunter. It is unique to what I've got, and uh, I don't see getting it wrong. I just don't see that I'm going to get it wrong. I'm a little worried about the uh, Crown Royal thing, but uh, still, I'm, I got I got a decent amount of confidence. Uh, Craft Beer Tastic said you should do some malt liquor taste challenges. I've done them. The problem with those is that you get these big cans or bottles, and then you got to drink them all. You know what I'm saying? And um, no, never mind. I was going to say they're they're kind of the same, but they're not really the same. So it's kind of like these. They're they're the same, but they're not the same. When you get down to it, they're not the same. Extreme PWN says, salutations from Romania. Oh, salutations back to you in Romania. My second cousin and his children lived in Romania for many years, and they all speak Romanian, which when I hear them talking, it sounds like they speak in Italian, you know, but they, um, they all speak fluent Romanian because the children were raised there. But if you heard them off the bat, you'd think they were speaking Italian. <laughs> so kind of... Latin variant. I like dogfish head liqueur, liqueur de malt. I've never gotten that one, but I, I'd love to find it. Versus Colt 45, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the decline says, hi, Ron. Hey, enjoy the decline. Is Country Club malt liquor good? Yes, it's very good. And beyond that, it's very difficult to find. Which is very irritating. So a lot of varies with that. I remember your videos about Romanian beer. Very good reviews. Oh, yes. You see, because that was the second cousin that sent those to me. You see, he sent me the bear, the, you know, the one with the bear and uh, all the other ones, the other two. Very good. He sent them to me from Romania, but he hasn't gone back to Romania in. Um, oh, about 10 years. No, about seven years. Timis Soriana. And um, I think mostly they were in the uh, Transylvania part of Romania. You remember where uh, Hungary and Romania kept having wars over that territory for all those years? We have some better beer, though. That's kind of commercial. Now we have nice craft beer. That's good. Ursus and Tim Soriana, if I remember correctly. Yes, this is. Our, yeah. Uh, and I think there was a third one. Just tape the malt to your hand, Ron. You will get through it. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. So, uh, Saturday morning, I plan to do Seagram's versus, uh, Seagram's Canadian Hunter versus, trying to think what I've got. Oh, Royal Canadian. 
Oh, no, no, no. Caliber, caliber, caliber. Uh, well, caliber is sort of like uh, Canadian Crest. It's kind of the same type thing. And then, so you, if you skip that video, I wouldn't get insulted. You say, I ain't watching the same thing again. I wouldn't get mad. And then uh, uh, Sunday morning is uh, Seagram's Canadian Hunter versus Royal Canadian. Well, that's going to be a tough one. That's going to be scary because Royal Canadian is very much like Crown Royal. And I had somebody tell me one time, they copied from Crown Royal. I said, what did they do? They went in a time machine because uh, Crown, uh, Canadian Royal Canadian hit the market in 1934 and Crown Royal hit the market in 1939. So how could they copy off of Crown Royal if they were around five years previous? Maybe uh, Crown Royal copied off of them, huh? Uh, then Monday, well, I'm doing Monday now, right? And then Tuesday, we've got a uh, Windsor Canadian. People say, oh, it's on now. A lot of viewers say, Windsor Canadian, it's on now. That's kind of a legendary product, Windsor Canadian. I know it is. Actually, it is actually um, from Alberta Distillers. And then I've got um, Gibson's Finest Rare, which is rare in Louisiana, but it ain't fine. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I don't like it. It's got a bad wood bite. It tastes like you're eating wood. And honestly, I don't want to eat wood or drink wood. Um, Heir to the Throne, uh, that's a throwaway, but uh, it has some little positive attributes even then, even so. And I'm the only person in the history of the internet that ever did a video review for it. Um... Trying to think, any other Canadian whiskeys coming in to play? Uh, There's probably one I forgot about, but that pretty much wraps it up. And then uh, before the end of the year, we'll be getting into Patty's Irish whiskey. Well, that's gonna that's gonna explode the views because people love. Pat you know, I've been hearing about Patty's for ten years. People say Patty's, that's the real deal, you know. And I bought a bottle. And it's the same price all over New Orleans, $19.99 a bottle, Patty's Irish Whiskey. That's a legendary brand, and I got it. And uh, I didn't say it was great. I ain't said it was world class. I said it was legendary. It is. It has a, a following. Uh, and I'm going to put it up against Bushmills, original, uh, Bushmills, Black Bush, and Bushmills, Red Bush. I don't know who's going to win because I ain't never had Patty's. Then we're going into blended scotch and get ready because I got the Mitsunara Japanese oak finished Chivas Regal. And that's a whole another fascinating story. When you see the price I paid for that, you're going to lose your mind up in here, up in here. All right. Thanks for watching this video production.